welcome back uh, viewers. Uh, so, uh, welcome to this course. Uh, today we are going to start with the lecture 23. So, in the previous lecture we have uh, discussed that uh, LU decomposition methods using the Gauss elimination and the Krauts method. So, today we will go further. So, in the previous uh, lecture we have discussed one example. In that case we was able to find the LU decomposition using Krauts method. So, today I will take the another example. So, let us take a matrix A and suppose this matrix is given as 1, 2, 6, 4, 8, minus 1 and minus 2, 3, 5 and I want to reduce it to the LU decomposition. So, in this case I will take my L. So, I will put this equal to 1 1 1 L 2 1 L 3 1 L 3 2 into U 1 1 U 1 2 U 1 3 and U 2 2 U 3 3 and U 2 3. Now, I know that from here I can say that my u11 1 1 is 1, u12 is 2 and u13 is 6. So, that is from step 1. Now, from step 2, if I take the using the second row, I will get L21 u11 is equal to 4 and from here I will get the value of L21. So, L21 is giving me 4 by U11. So, it is 4. Now, the next step will be to finding U22. So, I will find out L21 U12 plus U22. So, that should be equal to 8. So, from here my U22 will be 8 minus L21 U22. So, it is 8 minus L21 is 4 and U22 is 2. So, it is 4 into 2, 8. So, that is the value 0. So, in this case, what is happening? The value is coming 0. And if you remember that in the next steps to find the value of other elements, some we some places we have to divide by U22. But U22 is coming 0. So, in this case, we cannot divide by u22. So, from here I can say that LU decomposition is not possible. And if you look from the from the matrix A, then you can see that it is not diagonally dominant. So, in this case my matrix A is not diagonally dominant. So, it may happen that if I change this one and make this matrix as a diagonally dominant, then if I do the LU decomposition. So, in that case it may possible that I will get the LU decomposition. So, that is always there. If your matrix is diagonally dominant, then the this is uh, the value decomposition is possible. So, from here uh, in the previous uh, method where we have taken LU decomposition. So, I have uh, started with the method 1 LU decomposition using Gauss elimination. So, in the LU decomposition using Gauss elimination, we have ignored inter interchanging of rows. So, in that case, we have ignored the interchanging of rows. So, based on this one, 
So, in the previous one LU decomposition not possible using the crowds method so that is it. Now, we are want to uh, find out the another method. So, I am just telling you that in the starting we have started with the LU decomposition using Gauss elimination and we have ignored the interchanging row. So, in this case I am going to start with the new method and that is called the reduction of P A is equal to LU decomposition form where P is a permutation matrix. So, it is a permutation matrix. So, I can write the definition of permutation matrix. So, per so a matrix and n cross n matrix <coughs> permutation matrix P is a matrix with precisely with precisely one entry whose value is 1 in each column and in each column and row and all other values all other entries are 0. So, that is called the permutation matrix. For example, if I define the P as suppose I take a matrix 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Suppose I take this matrix 4 by 4 matrix I have taken. So, that is a permutation matrix in each row and each column only one element. So, if I want to this one, this is, so this is a permutation matrix. So, in the permutation matrix what we have done? We, we have started with the i that is the identity matrix. Zero, zero, 1. 0 and 0, 0, 0, 1. And then we have interchanged the first row. So, this is this permutation matrix if I save, I can save it as 3, 1, 2, 4. So, it means I have interchanged the third row with the first row, then this row with the second row and the second row with the fourth row. So, fourth row is, uh, is at the same place. So, that is my interchanging of the rows. So, this is it gives you only the interchanging of row because we know that if I want to make the matrix a diagonal dominant then I have to change the inter, interchange the rows. So, that we are also seen at the Gauss elimination method to make the matrix diagonal dominant we have done the partial pivoting and the partial pivoting was what was that? that was just to interchange the rows so that I can bring the highest element at this location and this location, this location and this location. Not in the in the permutation matrix, but in the given matrix A. So, in this case what we are doing? Now, from here I can say that <coughs> I have a matrix A. Now, I am applying permutation to this and then I am doing the LU decomposition. So, that is called the LU decomposition. So, what I am doing now? Suppose I have a matrix A. Suppose I take 3 by 3 matrix. So, I will take A. Then suppose I take a identity matrix I with the interchanging of first and third row. So, that I know that if I pre multiply the same will happen in the A. Then I am applying L 1. Then suppose I am doing L 
maybe so i should take uh, so i can take suppose 2 3 then i am taking l2 so this is my uh, l2 and then after that i am getting my u so from here i can say that my a will be what l2 i 2 3 l 1 i 1 3 inverse u. So, that is my a and I know that this i determinant is 1 i inverse is also i. So, this type of matrices are called involutory matrices. So, from here from if you see from here I can write this matrix as I 1 3 inverse L 1 inverse I 2 3 inverse L 2 inverse U and that is my A. So, from here I can write now I can write this as a I 1 3 I 2 3. So, I will putting the value here. So, I will getting I 1 3 2 3. So, this is I am multiplying by this one I 1 3 inverse L 1 3 I 2 3 inverse L 2 inverse and then L 1 3. So, this is I am uh, getting. Now, from here this is my i. So, that will become my p a and if you open this one just to do the calculation then it will give you p a is equal to l u. So, that is my l and this is my u. So, this will give me the lower triangular matrix and this will give me the upper triangular and my P A will be this one. So, that is the matrix with the partial probability with the uh, permutation of the rows. So, this is uh, we have to do uh, when we come across the math ways as we have done the example for the crowds methods. Because in the example of the crowd methods if I change this matrix into the in this form, suppose I write 4, 8, minus 1 and then 1, 2, 6 here and then minus 2, 3, 5. So, in this case my A 1, 1 will be 4, U 1, 2 will be 2, U 1, 3 will be 6 and then my L 2 1 U 1 1 will be 1. So, from here I can say my L 2 1 will be 1 by 4 and then if I want to find my L 2 1. So, my L so this one I want to do. So, I my U 2 2 will be 8 no not 8 it will be 2. So, that will be equal to 2 minus L 2 1 into u to 2. So, what is the L 2 1 is 1 by 4 into u to 2, u to 2 is it is u 1 2 yeah u 1 2 right. So, it is equal to u 1 2 that is 2. So, 2 minus, so it is 2 minus 1 by 4 into u 2, u 1 2, 2. So, that will be 2 minus half. So, it is 3 by 2. So, now it is becoming non zero. So, if I do this one, then may we it may possible that we will get the matrix, it not may possible, it will you will get the crowds methods for this one. 
So, now after doing this one, so all this will make the MATLAB code later on for uh, crowds methods for PA LU decomposition. Now, we take the another very important method and that is called the Cholesky method. So, what is going to happen in the Cholesky method? So, if I take a matrix A n by n matrix and matrix this matrix is symmetric and positive definite. So, two conditions are there symmetric and positive definite then the LU decomposition is given by Cholesky. So, in this case if I take the matrix A symmetric so it means A is equal to A transpose and then what will happen? I have my LU decomposition. So, I will take A transpose then it will be LU transpose and in this case it will be U transpose L transpose and my A transpose is equal to A. So, it means that should be equal to L u. So, from here I can say that either u t is equal to L or L t is equal to u. So, from here I can say that my matrix A can be decomposed as L then u is L transform or u transform u. So, in this case what is going to happen? Now, suppose I may L is so, I take suppose I take this method, uh, this uh, notation. So, let my this is L11, L22, uh, LNN. So, L12, L uh, sorry, 21, LN1, this one. So, now my L transformation will be the same element but it would become the upper triangular matrix. So, from here I can say that I need to find only these elements and what how many elements are there? So, we have a n elements at the diagonals plus n minus 1 at this points plus n minus 2 and so on up to 1. So, this will be equal to the n n plus 1 by 2. So, now I have to find n into n plus 1 by 2 elements from this because in the matrix we have n square elements. So, instead of n square elements we need to find only these elements. So, we have to find out much number of elements and based on this L then I can find my L transpose and then I reduce my A into the L L transpose notation. So, this one this method is only for the symmetric matrix and the positive definite matrix. So, let us uh, have some discussion about positive matrix and the symmetric matrix. Now, we, why we need the symmetric matrix? So, we need we know symmetric matrix. So, suppose A is n cross n matrix and the so it is called the symmetric matrix if A transpose is equal to A. So, when I talk about the symmetric matrix, I assume that A is a real matrix. So, with the benefit of the symmetric matrix is that it has all eigenvalues real. Because when we have the real eigenvalues, then we can say that whether it has a positive sign or negative sign. So, the benefit with the symmetric matrix is that it has a all the eigenvalues that is real and this uh, we can also prove. I know that for the eigenvalues I can write my A x is equal to lambda x where lambda may be complex 
because I don't know. I have to prove that it is a real or complex. So if it is a complex, A is real and this is a complex, so X is also complex. Now what I do is that I take conjugate, so this is equation number 1, apply conjugate and then transpose. So I can take conjugate, so conjugate A is a real, so does not matter. Lambda is a scalar, so I will put the conjugate and then this and then I take the transpose because lambda is a scalar, so transpose is nothing, so I will get the same value. So from here I will I can write this equation as x transpose a transpose is equal to so this one I can I have written. Now from here I know that A transpose is equal to A. So that gives me because so that gives me A is equal to lambda. So that equation I write as 2. Now what I do is that I am take the dot product, taking dot product of equation 1 with x bar transpose. So, what I will get? I will get x bar transpose A x is equal to x bar transpose lambda x and lambda is a scalar. So, I can take this as a outside and this will be this one. Now, same thing I am going to do with taking dot product of equation 2 with x. So, I will take with x only of the equation number 2. So, from here I can write x transpose a x is equal to lambda x. So, that is the dot product I have taken 3 and 4. So, from equation number 3 and 4, because this is a just a vector, so I can take the transpose. So, from 3 and 4 you, you will see that this and these are same. So, from here I can write that lambda bar x transpose x, this value is same as lambda x transpose x. And what is this? So, this is just a because if suppose x is a vector x1, x2, xn and is a complex value. So, x bar transpose will be x1 trans x n conjugate and then multiply by x. So, suppose I am doing this one. So, x transpose x will become this into x1, x2, xn and I know that x1 bar with x the complex number multiplied its conjugate will give you the modulus value because I know that a plus ib multiplied by a minus ib is equal to a square plus b square and the a plus i b modulus is a square plus b square under the root. So, this is the modulus square I can say that. So, if based on this one if you see from here then this quantity is basically I can write from here 
that this is first then second one then third one. So, square is equal to lambda square. So, this one I can write because from here I will get x 1 bar square plus x 2 bar square and x n modulus value square. So, this I take as a norm. So, this value will be there. So, from here I can eliminate this and from here I will get this. So, from here I can say that lambda is always real. So, for the symmetric matrix the eigenvalues are always real. <coughs> After that I will define the term positive definite. positive definite and that matrix is already symmetric, positive definite symmetric matrices because the matrix A is already symmetric and I am discussing the positive definite. So, so in this case from here I know that A x is equal to lambda x. <coughs> now and I, positive definite means that a matrix K that is n cross n is set to be positive definite if all eigenvalues, all eigenvalues are greater than 0 and it is called semi positive definite, this is for all i, lambda i is greater than or equal to 0 for all i. So, it means that my all the Eigen value should be greater than or equal to 0. So, if it is a positive definite it is strictly greater than 0 otherwise greater than or equal to 0. So, from here I know that how to find the Eigen value, I can find the Eigen value as a, a x is equal to lambda x where x is not equal to 0 and lambda is my Eigen value. I can multiply this with the A transpose and I can write this one as. So, from here I can write x transpose x and from here I can write my lambda is equal to x transpose A x is equal to x transpose x. So, x transpose x is the square. So, from here this quantity I can be written as square. So, from here this quantity is always positive, suppose this is positive. So, if x transpose A x is positive for all x, then my lambda is always positive and then we will say that the A is positive definite. So, in that case I will say that A is positive definite. Other way is to find that how we can uh, find out that A is uh, uh, positive definite. So, then we can say that all the pivots are positive. So, all the pivots will be positive. So, what are the pivots? Like I have a matrix A and suppose I take uh, the matrix uh, may be 3, 2, 1, 1. So, this is a symmetric matrix A transpose equal to A. Now, in this case what are the pivots? So, the first pivot is 3. So, and the next pivot is, so the first pivot 3 and the next is so, next is I will call it, I can reduce this with the Gauss elimination or the another method is that finding the determinant. So, it is a 6 minus 1 that is 5 divided by 3. So, that is 
5 by 3. So, in this case 3, so in this case my pivot 3 is positive, 5 by 3 is positive. So, from here I can say that this is positive definite. So, this matrix is positive definite matrix and from here I can give one information that what are the pivots, how we can find the pivots. So, pivots can be find out with the, <coughs> the determinant because we consider the left most uh, uh, square matrices. So, in that case we will get the determinant. A the determinant of this one divided by A k minus 1 k minus 1, where A k means where A is the left most k cross k sub matrix and this is the previous one. So, like this is a 2 cross 2 matrix and this is the previous one. So, I have done taking the determinant of this divided by this. So, that is a pivot. So, based on the elements of the pivots because it is very easy to reduce this matrix into the Gauss elimination type and then we can find the pivots. So, based on the sign of the pivots I can say that whether my matrix is a positive definite or not. So, from here I can say that sign of pivots is same as sign of eigenvalues. So, based on the pivot, sign of the pivots I can find out that whether the matrix is positive definite or the negative definite or the mixed type. So, that is all about the positive definite matrix. So, we will stop today here. Uh, so, in the in the today class so we have discussed about that how we can apply the the permuted matrix LU decomposition method and then we have discussed the another method that is Cholesky method for symmetric matrix and the positive definite matrix and the next class will discuss about the other method also. So, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.